Hey everybody, welcome back to the Love Dogs channel. I thought I would do something just a little bit different for this week's video since we are still without the van and as such, there's not really much to do a van life vlog about. So I thought I would take this opportunity. I do have my camera bag here. I am a photographer, for those who don't know, that is my full-time job. I do a lot of art festivals and sell prints and I also do portrait work and some other work as well. I've done um, museum photography, which was very interesting to me. I loved doing that. Um, but I do a variety of different things and um, primarily nature and landscape. So most of you who have been following along for a while now probably know that when I go backpacking, I do bring my camera and probably um, 80 to 90% of my photos come from multi-day backpacking trips. So this bag that I have here with me, I primarily use just to keep all of my gear in one place. And it was easy, for example, when the van broke down, it was very easy for me to just grab this whole bag and know that I had all of my camera gear. With the exception of my tripod, I did leave the tripod in the van. Um, but usually I do have the tripod in a po side pocket here as well. Um, and this bag allows me to have all of my photography gear in one place. Also with the exception of some of my portrait gear, like my backdrop stand, and I do have two backdrops that are um, in the van that I keep for as part of my mobile studio setup. This bag is a Shimoda Action X30. It's the old version, so um, there is a version 2 out now that I wish that I had, but it's uh, probably not worth worth it to me to pay uh, $300, $400 to get the version 2, but um, the version 2 has a handle on the bottom and I do wish that mine had that. I think it would make things a lot easier. I actually wish that they would just put handles on all four sides, um, but this one has one at the top and on this side, which I suppose is good enough. What I typically end up doing is using the hip belt to help me maneuver this bag. But this backpack is a back access and it does also have a side access. If I was wearing it and I wanted to fling it off my shoulder and swing it around, I could access through the side. Mostly, I actually will lay this on the ground and access it through the back. So we'll just open it up and I'll show you what I've got inside. So you'll notice that this does fit a laptop. I think it fits like a 15 inch, up to a 15 inch. And then in this lens case, I actually just have a bunch of extra end caps and hoods. And um, I think I have a lens tripod mount for my larger lens. And I have some uh, lens cleaning cloths. So there's not a lot in here. I am pretty happy with the kit that I have. I don't feel like I need much else. Um, and I like to keep it simple, especially when I'm backpacking. I don't like to take a lot of, of gear with me. And most of the time, I only take one lens when I'm backpacking. I'll take the camera, one lens that's on it, and I'll take the drone. Sometimes I'll take an action cam. I actually don't have an action cam at the moment. I sold the Insta360 One RS. I'm not sure I'll get another one. Uh, to be honest, I've been pretty happy with the quality that my iPhone gives me, and so that with my uh, Fuji is probably good enough. So I shoot Fuji. I, I shoot Fuji X systems. I currently have a Fuji X-T5, and that's what I'm using to record this video on, so I can't show it to you, but maybe I'll insert some footage of it that I'll take with the phone in, in a little bit. I switched to Fuji from Canon when the X-T1 came out, so 2014, I believe. So I've been a Fuji user for the last 10 years or so, and when I switched, it just, it felt so much more comfortable in my hand. I loved the tactile aspect of it. Um, instead of flipping through a bunch of digital menus, everything could be programmed to a wheel or a button. And I just, I love the tactile sensation of it. And I loved the smaller size of the mirrorless Fujis. Um, compared to the Canon, I think I had the 5D original. Um, so quite a size difference, which was beneficial to me as a backpacker. 
So like I said, right now I have the Fuji X-T5. The lens that's on it right now is the 16 to 55 f2.8. That is one of my favorite lenses. Fuji just recently came out with a version two of that lens, which someday I do hope to get, mostly because it is smaller and lighter and also has a de-clickable aperture ring, which would be good for video so that you don't hear that clicking when you change the aperture. So that would be on my list, but it's not a priority. So I'm pretty happy with the 16 to 55 that I currently have the Gen 1 version. In addition to that lens, I have <clears throat> this huge lens. Um, you would think that it's a bigger zoom than it is based on the size, but um, I also have the 50 to 140 f 2.8. This is a very sharp lens. I love this lens. I pair it a lot with the 2x converter, which I have in this bag. And I'm not a wildlife photographer, I don't claim to be, but occasionally if I see wildlife out on the trail or somewhere, I, I will make some images of them. And I have in the past used this with the 2X converter pretty successfully for wildlife images. So I like that combination. I would eventually like to get the 100 to 400 lens, but again, it's not a priority because I don't consider myself a wildlife photographer. And last but not least, this is probably my absolute favorite lens. This is the Fuji 35 f2.0. It's incredibly sharp, it's small, it's lightweight. And um, if I had to choose one lens to take on the camera anywhere, this might be my choice. I also carry a um, Tascam audio recorder. I've got my Garmin inReach Mini in here, uh, the van keys. Uh, I use the Tascam when I wanna record uh, like, field audio. So for example, I use this to record coyotes a lot. Uh, coyotes is the sound of coyotes howling and yipping is one of my favorite sounds. And I will often try to record it when I'm out camping or backpacking. Um, I also have used it to record. There was a sound on the Colorado trail one year <clears throat> that I couldn't identify, but I used this to record that sound so that I could take it home and, and try to ID it. So I do like this Tascam. It's really high quality audio for field recordings. And along the lines of audio, what I'm using right now, I have the DJI mic kit, the first version. So it's not the Bluetooth version, it's the wired version. And I've been pretty happy with that. So also in here, we have my very high tech SD card holders. Uh, I have these little Ziploc pill pockets, uh, SD cards, more SD cards and micro SD cards for the drone. Looks like I have a charging cable and drone filters, drone lens filters and a Peak Design plate. I think this charging cable actually goes to a battery. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, in this pocket, I have extra batteries. I've got um, Wasabi Power. Uh, they're a good off-brand battery for Fuji. I've got two of those. I have two Fuji brands. And then I have two small rig batteries that look like this. And they actually come with a USB-C um, plug in the end of the battery. And I have found that I really like these, especially when I go backpacking. Um, I just prefer to be able to plug in to the battery directly instead of having to put them on a separate charger. It's less to have to pack and they've been working really well. So uh, I love these small rig uh, batteries. And that's pretty much it. That's what's in my bag. So pretty simple. Um, I don't like to complicate things too much with a lot of gear. I do have a Peak Design tripod that is in the van. I don't have it with me. And uh, it's the aluminum version. That has worked really well for me. It's actually been one of the most uh, user-friendly tripods that I've ever owned. Nine times out of 10 though, I will likely handhold the camera and not use a tripod. I've mostly used that tripod for video actually since I started doing YouTube videos. 
I do also have the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone. That's what I use for all of my aerial stuff. And I've got this case for it, which is a DJI branded case. Um, but I have the RC, the drone, and then four extra batteries and the three battery charger in here. Uh, I have additional filters in here. I've got extra remote knobs, controllers, um, because I already lost one and I had to buy some extras. And in this pocket up here, I have extra propellers. So at one point I did keep the drone in the backpack as well. And I found that unless I'm backpacking, um, usually if I go out to do some drone footage, I'm only taking the drone. And so it was easier just to have this little case for the drone on its own. So I will say that this backpack, the Shimoda Action X30, that's a pack that I would not bring backpacking. I would uh, actually, when I'm backpacking, I'll try to find some old footage to insert here so that you can see what I do. But I have the Durston Kakwa 40, and I really like that pack for backpacking. I have yet to really find a camera specific backpack that is suitable for multi-day backpacking trips. So what I do is I take a backpacking pack and I'll actually use another small bag to put my drone and extra batteries and SD cards and things like that. It's a waterproof bag. I think it's called a multi-bag, actually made by Z-Packs. And I'll put my drone and all my extra accessories in that and I actually put it on top of everything else in my backpack. That has worked really well for me so far. As far as my camera, and I usually only bring one lens when I'm out backpacking, what I'll do is I'll put the camera on a Peak Design clip on my shoulder strap, and then I have a Peak Design cover. It's a waterproof fabric cover that goes over the entire camera and the lens, and it cinches down in front of the lens. And that has worked really well for me. So typically I'll leave the camera on that Peak Design clip on the shoulder of my backpack the entire trip and um, take it off when I'm in the tent. I don't talk a lot about photography on my channel. I, I, didn't, I don't really approach my channel as a photography channel because to me, it is not solely about the photography. Yes, I make a living using photography as a means of artistic expression and selling prints. However, that's not the point of me going out into wilderness areas. Um, for me, it's about being out there and the experiences that I encounter and being able to share that with other people, whether it's through YouTube or in person, that is really what it's all about for me. And so the images are actually secondary and there's kind of a fun, I guess fun question. Sometimes photographers are asked, especially outdoor nature photographers, um, and that is, would you if, if you couldn't share your images, would you still make an image? And um, I think my answer would be yes, because it's expression for me. However, at the same time, I could very easily go backpacking uh, for a multi-day backpacking trip and not take a camera, and I would be absolutely thrilled. So um, for me, it's just not about the photography. I go out there, I would be out there anyway. I was out there before I ever picked up a camera and I will be out there without a camera um, again in the future, I'm sure. So um, the photography is just a bonus for me and I, I feel incredibly lucky to be able to eke out a living doing this. Uh, I'm very happy being able to do this and, uh, and very grateful for it. In the end, really what photography is to me is just a way to express my gratitude for wild places and my love for those wild places. Um, and in some way, uh, I, I hope that it encourages or inspires others to get out and explore their own connection to nature. I hope some of you found this interesting. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Maybe I'll do more uh, videos about photography in the future. Um, you can let me know if you'd like to see more of those or not. Anyway, hopefully next week I'll have the van back and we'll have another video for you all. So I hope you'll stick around. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. <music>